In this lesson, we want to talk about solving trigonometric equations using linear methods. All right, so let's start off with the easiest possible scenario. We're going to solve some trigonometric equations, again, with these linear methods. Let's say you had something like 2 plus 4 times the sine of theta is equal to 4. So what we're trying to do here, we're trying to find values of theta, okay, that I could plug in here and make the equation true. Now, before I go through this, let's just look at something from basic algebra so we'll remember this. If I had something like 2 plus 4x is equal to 4, how would I solve this? Well, I'm trying to find values for x that make the equation true, right? So I would first try to isolate x, so I would subtract 2 away from each side of the equation, and so this is going to cancel. I would say 4x is equal to 2, divide both sides by 4, and I get that x is equal to 1 half, okay? So I plug a 1 half in there, and basically you have what? You have 2 plus, basically 4 times a half is 2, so 2 plus 2 gives me 4, so that is the correct solution. With this guy, it's not as straightforward, it's not as easy, because remember, you're plugging in an angle measure there, sine of that guy would give you a number, okay? So you're looking for sine of some value, I can already tell you that this needs to be a half for this to be true. So where is sine of theta equal to a half? Okay, that's what you're going to be looking for. But to solve this fully, let me subtract 2 away from each side of the equation, this cancels, we get 4 times the sine of theta is equal to 2. We divide both sides by 4, and basically we're going to get that the sine of theta, again, is equal to a half, okay? So from this guy right here, this is where you need to basically do a little bit of detective work, okay? There are so many ways to solve this, it's not even funny. You might want to use a calculator and use your inverse sine function. You might want to use the unit circle. There's a lot of different things that you could do. You could use the special triangles that you remember, all kinds of ways. So let me talk about two ways that you can solve this. First, let's think about the unit circle approach. So if you are lucky and you get an easier problem where basically you can find this from the unit circle, you can go to the unit circle. If I'm looking for sine of theta is equal to a half, well, you can look for the y coordinate and find out where it's a half. Okay, so for 30 degrees or pi over 6 in terms of radians, the y coordinate is a half, right? So that tells me that sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half. Then also, I know that sine is positive in quadrant 2. So remember, when we think about reference angles, if the reference angle is 30 degrees, then sine of that guy is also going to be a half, right? So where would I have a reference angle of 30 degrees? Well, with 150 degrees, right? Because 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, the reference angle will be 30 degrees. So sine of 150 degrees, sine of 150 degrees, and I'm messing up my right in there, so sine of 150 degrees would also be a half, right? And you can see that here. This is a half, this is 150 degrees, or 5 pi over 6 if you're talking about radians. Now, when you talk about solutions over the interval from, if you're thinking about 0 to 360 degrees, your solutions would be 30 degrees and 150 degrees. But when you think about a general solution, remember, when you think about sine and cosine, the period is 360 degrees or 2 pi, okay? So that means if I started here and I rotated around 360 degrees, well, instead of 30 degrees, now I'd have 390 degrees, and sine sine of 390 degrees would also be a half, okay? If I added 360 degrees again, then sine of, in that case, 750 degrees would also be a half, you know, so on and so forth. Same thing with 150 degrees. If I add 360 degrees, I'm going to be at 510 degrees. Sine of that guy would be a half as well, okay? So let's take that information and come back here and give a solution, okay? So first, let's pretend we're restricting the domain. So 0 to 360 degrees, or again, you might see this in terms of radians, so you might see 0 to 2 pi in terms of radians. Whatever you get, you want to match that in terms of your answer, okay? So if you get degrees, put degrees. If you get radians, put radians, okay? So in this case, I'll just do both. So in this particular case, I'll say that theta is equal to, we had 30 degrees and then also 150 degrees. And again, you know the reference angle for both of those is going to be 30 degrees. And then if we look at, in terms of radians, we could say theta is equal to, pi over 6, this is 30 degrees in terms of radians, and then 5 pi over 6, this is 150 degrees in terms of radians. Now, this is the solution for the restricted domain. If you want a general solution, so let me put the general solution, 
Okay, so this is going to keep working as we either rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So remember, if you go 360 degrees, doesn't matter which direction, if you go negative direction, so you're going clockwise, or you go the positive direction, so you're going counterclockwise, you're going to keep getting these guys. Okay, so I'm going to start with, let me make some set braces here. Okay, this is typically how you'll see it. I'm going to take this solution, you could do it degrees, or you could do it radians, I'll do both, so 30 degrees plus the 360 degrees, okay, when you go around, again, you're going to get that same value, and then times n, where n is just any integer, okay, and then I'm going to do 150 degrees, and then plus this 360 degrees, let me slide all of this down, because it's not going to fit, so let me move this down, and let me put this comma back where it should be, right there, okay, so this, I'll close my set braces, and I forgot my n, so let me put the n there, okay, so that's your general solution in terms of degrees, with radians, you would say pi over 6 plus, remember, 360 degrees is just 2 pi, okay? So I'm going to put 2 pi n, and then I'll do 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, okay? So there's your general solution. There's your solution for having this domain restriction, okay, where basically you're between 0 and 2 pi, or if you think about this in terms of degrees, 0 and 360 degrees. Now, let's talk about another way that you could have gotten this answer. In a lot of cases, especially harder cases, you're not going to be able to use the unit circle, okay? So what you want to do is use your inverse sine function. So let me use a fresh sheet here. Let's say I looked on my calculator and I did inverse sine of, in this particular case, we were looking at a half, okay? So you punch this into your calculator, and we already know you're only going to get one value, right? You're just going to get 30 degrees, okay? But again, if I think about sine of theta is equal to one half, there's an infinite number of angle measures there that's going to be true for this. And if I have one of them, then I can find all of them. Again, because where is sine positive? It's positive in quadrants one and two, okay? So I have the answer from quadrant one. I have my answer from quadrant one. It's gonna be 30 degrees. And again, it repeats. So 360 degrees in either direction. So if I go plus 360 degrees, or if I go minus 360 degrees, I'm going to, again, run into another solution. But in quadrant two, I just need an angle where the reference angle is 30 degrees, okay? So again, that's going to be found by taking 180 degrees. So I would take 180 degrees, okay, minus 30 degrees, and that gives me 150 degrees, okay? So this is the angle I'm looking for. So in quadrant two, I get 150 degrees. So that's another way that you could solve this. You could also use special triangles if you wanted to, okay? So there's a lot of different ways to think about this guy. Okay, let's look at another example. So we have the cosine of theta now instead of the sine of theta. So we have negative 4 minus 4 times the cosine of theta is equal to negative 3 minus 2 times the cosine of theta. And again, if you were working with this, let's say you had something like negative 4 minus 4x is equal to negative 3 minus 2x. Well, I'd want to get all the terms with x on one side, all the numbers on the other. Same thing here. I'm going to get all the terms with cosine of theta in, involved on one side, all the numbers to the other. So let me add 4 to both sides, okay? And let me add 2 cosine theta to both sides, okay? And basically, we see that over here, this is going to cancel. Over here, this is going to cancel. So I have negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2, times the cosine of theta is equal to negative 3 plus 4, which is 1, okay? To isolate this guy, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, and I'm basically going to find that the cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. Again, another easy problem where you can get this from the unit circle, but let's go ahead and use our inverse cosine function. So let's go cosine inverse of negative one half, and let's do a little bit of detective work. If you punch that in on a calculator, you're gonna get 120 in terms of degrees, okay? So let me erase this so I can drag this up. We'll have a little bit of room, okay? Let me bring this up. And let's think about this. So I have 120 degrees there, okay? So in terms of the reference angle for that, remember, if you're in quadrant two, the reference angle is 180 degrees minus your angle, which is 120 degrees. So this is going to be 60 degrees. So this is my reference angle, okay? So what I want to do now, again, because this is negative here, cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. So I have my quadrant two solution my quadrant two solution is 120 degrees. For my quadrant three solution, I want to think about an angle in quadrant three, okay, that has a reference angle of 60 degrees. How do I find that? Well, in quadrant three, I would want to take 180 degrees, and I would want to add to that 
60 degrees, which is my reference angle, okay, which would give me 240 degrees. Okay, this is 240 degrees. And the reason that works is, again, if I had a 240 degree angle, and I said, hey, what's the reference angle? You would subtract 180 degrees to get 60 degrees, okay? So this is my answer in quadrant two, this is my answer in quadrant three, okay? Now, again, if you wanted a general solution, so let's pretend that first, you got a domain restriction from zero to 360 degrees, like this, and then also in terms of radians, we have zero to two pi, okay, like this. So for the degrees, you would just put that theta is equal to 120 degrees, okay, and then 240 degrees. And then for your general solution, again, all you have to do in this particular case is let's use some set braces here, and we'll say 120 degrees plus 360 degrees times n, where n is any integer, and then you'd have 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times n, where n is any integer. Okay, if you want to do this in terms of radians, we can do that as well, no problem. So we would say something like theta is equal to, within this domain, 120 degrees is going to be 2 pi over 3, okay? And then we also have 240 degrees, which is going to be 4 pi over 3, okay? For the general solution, I just go 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, and then I go four pi over three plus two pi n, okay? So again, the period for cosine and sine is 360 degrees or two pi in terms of radians. So that's what you wanna add. So you have two pi and then n is just any integer, okay? So that's how you wanna do that. Now, if you wanted to solve this more quickly, especially if an easy problem, use the unit circle. So where's the x value negative one half? Well, again, you come over here, Negative one half is 120 degrees or two pi over three radians, okay? And then also 240 degrees or four pi over three radians, you got negative one half again is the x value, okay? So this is the quickest way to do it. The other way is something you need to understand because in some situations, you're not gonna be able to use the unit circle. They're going to at some point give you harder problems. Okay, let's look at one more problem. And this one has tangent involved. Remember the period for tangent is now going to be pi, okay? Or 180 degrees. So you have to keep that in mind here. So if I have something like the negative of the square root of three plus four minus tangent of theta is equal to four plus eight times the tangent of theta, well, immediately I can just get rid of the four from each side, right? Same thing on each side, just get rid of it. And what I wanna do now, let me go ahead and subtract eight times the tangent of theta away from each side of this guy. So I forgot my eight. So minus eight times the tangent of theta, okay? So this will cancel out over here, okay? And I'm just going to add three times the square root of three to both sides. So what I'm gonna end up with is, you can put a negative one there. You'll say you have negative nine times the tangent of theta is equal to three times the square root of three, divide both sides by negative nine, okay? Let me scroll down just a little bit, and I'll say that I have the tangent of theta is equal to, the three is gonna cancel with the nine, this is a one, this is a three. So let's say the negative of the square root of three over three. Okay, so now with tangent, it is a little bit more challenging to think about these. You could use your special triangles in this particular case and just think about the square root of three over three. The tangent of 30 degrees is square root of three over three. So let me just write this over here. The tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of three over three. So again, I would say that tangent is going to be negative where? Let me draw this out here so we remember this. So we remember the all students take calculus. So tangent is negative in quadrants four and two, okay? So let's think about this. In quadrant two, where would I have a 30 degree reference angle? Again, if I take 180 degrees and I subtract off 30 degrees, that gives me 150 degrees, okay? My reference angle here for 150 degree angle would be 30 degrees. So my value here, if I did tangent of 150 degrees, because it's negative, I would get the negative square root of three over three, okay? So let me erase this for a second. Let me just put one answer here. So theta here would be 150 degrees, or again, if you wanna write this in terms of radians, this is five pi over six, okay? Whatever you wanna do. So let me erase this for a second. Let's think about in quadrant four. So remember I said the period when you work with tangent is 180 degrees. So I can just add 180 degrees to this, okay? So 150 degrees plus 180 degrees is gonna be 330 degrees, okay? 
Also, what you could have done, and this is 11 pi over 6 in terms of radians. Also, what you could have done is, again, look for a 30 degree reference angle in quadrant 4. So in quadrant 4, I would just go 360 degrees minus 30 degrees is going to give me 330 degrees. So this is the angle I'm looking for. All right. So obviously, these would be your solutions if you had a domain restriction. Okay. But if you didn't have a domain restriction, let me just write this over here. So this is 0 to 360 degrees. And this one is 0 to 2 pi Okay, in terms of radians. If you didn't have a domain restriction, you have to be careful because a lot of students will come through here. They're used to working with sine and cosine. So they go 150 degrees plus 360 degrees times n. Okay, this is actually wrong. Okay, the period for tangent is 180 degrees. So you want to put 180 degrees like this. Now, do you need to list 330 degrees plus 180 degrees times n? No, you do not. And the reason for this is if you go back to this one right here, let's say n is 1. Well, you're basically adding 150 degrees to 180 degrees, you get to 330 degrees. So you don't need to put this guy in here. It's just overkill. Okay, just put it like this and be done with it. Okay, then the other one over here for radians, you're just going to put 5 pi over 6 plus you're going to do pi, okay, which is 180 degrees in terms of radians times n. Okay, that's all you need to do because again, if you added basically one, you could get a common denominator says 6 over 6. So if you had 6 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6, you would get 11 pi over 6. Okay, so again, it's overkill to list both of them in that case. You just want to list it like this as simply as you possibly can. In this lesson, we want to talk about solving trigonometric equations by factoring. All right, so now we're just going to look at the next scenario. We already talked about how to solve these basic trigonometric equations using linear methods. Now we're just going to be factoring, okay? So we have 3 times cosine theta plus 2 times cosine squared theta equals negative 1. So a, a very easy problem. You want to get this. If you see something with a squared term in it, you want to think about factoring right away. Okay, that's usually how you're going to solve that. And you want to think about getting it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, remember this is a quadratic and you're able to solve this by factoring and then setting each factor equal to 0, right? That's the zero factor property. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to move this to the left basically. So I'm going to say I have 2 times cosine squared theta and then plus this 3 times cosine of theta. And I can add 1 to both sides of the equation. So say plus 1 and this equals 0. Okay. So I, if I can factor the left side, again, I can use that zero factor property. Now, there is a tremendous roadblock to factoring this when you first start. I don't know why it is, but when I work with students, and I'm just going to do it on the first one, I tell them just make a little substitution. So in this case, you're working with cosine of theta. Okay. So just let something like u be equal to the cosine of theta. Okay. So everywhere you see cosine of theta, replace it with u. So here I have cosine squared theta, which is basically cosine of theta squared. So I would say I have 2u squared plus, in this case, 3u, and then plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so from here, could I factor this and solve it using factoring? Yes, of course I could. So this guy is a prime number, and this guy is 1. So this is really easy to factor. This is going to be 2u, okay, and this is going to be u. We know that off the top. And we know that because this is positive 1 and all the signs are positive, the only possibility is that this would be 1 and this would be 1, right? So basically, you would check this and say, okay, well, 2u times u is 2u squared. The outer would be 2u. The inner would be u. So those combined together would give me the 3u. And the last would be 1 times 1, which is 1. So we're good to go, okay? So you could have factored this the same way using the same principles with the cosine of theta in there. But again, I use u there just to avoid the little roadblock of first factoring a trigonometric expression like this, okay? So what I want to do now is because u is cosine of theta, I just want to plug back in. So I'm going to say two times everywhere there's a u, I'm plugging in a cosine of theta, then plus one, and then times you have your cosine of theta plus one, and this equals zero, okay? So now that we've got this guy factored, let's set each factor equal to zero. And let's see if we can get a solution. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to say two times cosine of theta plus one equals zero. Let's subtract one away from each side of the equation. We're going to get two times cosine of theta is equal to negative one. Divide both sides by two. And I'm going to get that the cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. OK, 
okay? So you're gonna see the same numbers pop up over and over again. You probably at this point know that the values for this in terms of degrees would be 120 degrees and 240 degrees, but I'll go to the unit circle in a moment and show you. So let me just erase this, kind of make this a little bit more neat. And I'll just say that cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. Let me just slide this over just a little bit and I'll delete this from here. And I'm gonna go down to the unit circle all at once. So let's do this side now. So we have cosine of theta. Basically, you're just subtracting one away from each side. So let's, let's do the full thing. So plus one equals zero, subtract one away from each side. You get cosine of theta is equal to negative one. You probably know already this happens at 180 degrees or pi if you think about radians, okay? So let's move this up and say we have cosine of theta is equal to negative one. Okay, so let's go to the unit circle real quick and get all, all of our solutions. Again, you can also do this using your calculator. You can do it with special triangles. There's so many ways to do it, okay? But for the first two, they're very easy. I'm gonna give you a final problem where you have to use your calculator. There's no other choice, okay? So we'll see that. So let's go down to the unit circle. So again, if we're looking for cosine of theta is equal to negative one half, and then cosine of theta is equal to negative one, where you're looking for an x value of negative one half. So that's gonna happen here, again, at 120 degrees or two pi over three radians. And then also, remember this guy would have a reference angle of 60 degrees. So you would want 240 degrees because that also has a reference angle of 60 degrees. So this is your negative one half there, again, 240 degrees or four, or four pi over three radians. So let's write 120 degrees. And then I'm gonna write 240 degrees out here. I'll put a little space here because I'm gonna put this 180 degrees here for the negative one, right? So negative one is your X value there. So let's put 180 degrees there. And let's just put the radians in there as well. Generally, you're gonna give your answer based on the restriction you get, right? If they tell you the interval is between zero and 360 degrees, you put degrees. If they tell you zero to two pi, you put your radians, okay? So let's go ahead and put, we have two pi over three. We have pi and then we have four pi over three, okay? So let's go ahead and copy this. We're gonna need that, and we're back here. So let me just go ahead and paste this in, bring this over here. So this is going to be our solution. Again, if you restrict the domain, so for this one, let's say that we restrict the domain from zero degrees to 360 degrees, okay? So basically in that interval. And then for this one, let me use a different color here. For this one, this is going to be if you restrict it from zero to two pi, okay, in terms of radians. So based on what you get, that's how you're gonna get your answer. Now, if you're asked to get a general solution, remember, these guys are going to repeat, right? So with the sine or cosine, if you're working with one of those, the period, okay, is gonna be 360 degrees or two pi in terms of radians. So just take this, if you wanted a general solution, so let's put general solution here, you would take these guys, so I'm gonna say 120 degrees plus 360 degrees times N, where N is just any integer, okay? You're just gonna take all of them. So then 180 degrees plus 360 degrees times N, okay? And then lastly, 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times N, okay? Let me close the set braces. Then for this one, remember 360 degrees is like two pi in terms of radians. So what I wanna do here is say two pi over three, and then plus, we'll have two pi times n. Okay, so n is any integer. Same thing, so pi plus two pi n, and then lastly, four pi over three plus two pi n, okay? So we have our general solution here, and then we have our solution where basically we're in an interval, you could say you're restricting the domain. All right, for the next one, let's look at four equals sine of beta, plus two times sine squared beta plus three. Again, if you have something squared and then something to the first power, I'm always thinking factoring, right? I'm always thinking AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, okay? So I'm going to write it like that. I'm gonna first, let's go ahead and flip the sides. I want everything to be on the left side that I'm working with. So let's go ahead and say we have two times sine squared beta plus let's say sine of beta, okay? I'm going to subtract four away from each side of the equation. So this would end up being basically negative one over here, because if I subtract four away from each side, this would be negative one and this equals zero, right? So basically I just flipped everything, okay? So that's legal. So now what I have here, I should be able to factor, right? So again, if you're struggling with this, if you just can't get past the mental roadblock, go ahead and take sine of beta and set that equal to a variable like u. 
okay? But I think we can get past it, right? So I'm just going to put sine of beta here and sine of beta here to start. Now this two in front, that's a prime number. So I've got to stick that in one of these. So I'm just going to stick it here, okay? So we have two times sine of beta times sine of beta, which will give me two times sine squared beta. Okay, so that works. Now we have alternating signs here. Let's think about this. We have a negative one as a final term. So it has to be one times one, but we have to think about the signs there. Is it going to be plus here and minus here or vice versa? Well, the outer here would be two times sine of beta, okay? But it would be negative. And then the inner would be plus, okay, plus the sine of beta. So that's not going to work because the middle term's positive, okay? So that means I need a plus here and a minus here. So let's erase this. And now you see it works out, right? Because the outer would be two times sine of beta. And then the inner would be minus sine of beta. And so if I do the subtraction, I get my plus sine of beta. And then negative one times positive one is negative one. So we have correctly factored this guy. Same thing. So two times sine of beta minus one, setting that equal to zero. Let's go ahead and solve it. Add one to each side of the equation. You get two times sine of beta is equal to one. And I'm going to divide each part by two here. And basically I get that the sine of beta is equal to a half, okay? So let's erase this. And you see these values so often, it's almost like you start dreaming about them. We know that this is gonna be 30 degrees or 150 degrees. Again, if we're in that interval from zero to 360 degrees, where you could say pi over six or five pi over six in terms of radians. So let me write this over here. So sine of beta equals one half. So right now I know beta is equal to, well, let me just do this in solution set notation. We know we have 30 degrees and we have 150 degrees. Okay, so, so far that's what we got. And let me put this in terms of radians also. So let's go pi over six and then five pi over six. Okay, so what's gonna be the result from over here? Let me draw a little line. We have the sine of beta plus one equals zero. Again, we're just going to subtract one away from each side. So the sine of beta is equal to negative one. And again, if you know your unit circle, this is basically going to give us 270 degrees or three pi over two, right? So let's get rid of this and let's put 270 degrees, okay? And then over here, let's put three pi over two. Let me just erase this real quick. And let me just drag this out of the way. So we'll put this over here, okay? So let's put or. And then let's come down here. And again, the more you reference the unit circle, the more you work with it, the more you memorize it. Again, we were looking for sine of beta to be equal to one half. So that's gonna be here. You're looking for your Y value. So 30 degrees or pi over six. And then if I go in quadrant two where sine is positive, again, what angle is gonna have a reference angle of 30 degrees, 150 degrees, okay? So it's gonna be here. Okay, it's 150 degrees or five pi over six. Then if you're looking for a Y value of negative one, it's gonna be at 270 degrees or here, or again, three pi over two in terms of radians. Okay, so let's talk about the general solution. This might not be obvious, okay? But when you look at these, sometimes they're gonna have this pattern. I know when we work with sine or cosine, they repeat every 360 degrees. But if you notice this one, if you started, let's say you went through and you say, okay, well, 30 degrees plus 360 degrees is 390 degrees, okay? Then 150 degrees plus 360 degrees is 510 degrees. And then 270 degrees plus 360 degrees is 630 degrees, okay? So I want you to notice that everything that I have here is just differing by 120 degrees. So if I start here and go here, I added 120 degrees, I added 120 degrees, I added 120 degrees, so on and so forth. For a general solution, in this particular case, I can say 30 degrees, okay, plus, I know the period of sine is 360 degrees, but because of this, I can say 120 degrees times n. OK, because after 270 degrees, if you added 120 degrees, you'd have 390 degrees, which is 30 degrees plus 360 degrees. And if you added 360 degrees again, you get to 510 degrees, which is 150 degrees plus 360 degrees, so on and so forth. You understand what's going on. So 30 degrees plus 120 degrees times n, this would be a simpler way to write this. OK, and then for this guy, if you want to put this in terms of radians, let's go ahead and just say that you have pi over six. OK. Plus, you're going to do 120 degrees in terms of radians. So that's 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3. And then times that. Okay, so let's close that up. So this would be our general solution. And then this is if we had a domain restriction. So let's say from 0 to 360 degrees. And then here, let's do from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. 
All right, let's look at one that's much more challenging, okay? So here, we're not going to be able to use our fancy unit circle. I think we can on one part, but on the other, we can't. So we have tangent squared beta plus tangent of beta minus 2 equals 0, okay? So same deal. I'm going to be able to factor this, and I'm just going to set this up. It's already, it's already in line for me the way I want it. So I'm just going to put the tangent of beta, okay, and the tangent of beta. So I basically need a positive 1 and a negative 2. So how am I going to get that? Well, basically, I want to do positive 2 and negative 1, okay? So this guy is factored. Pretty easy to do that. Let's go ahead and start with the easier one. So let me start with the tangent of beta minus 1 equals 0. So we'll say that tangent of beta, if I add 1 to each side, would be equal to 1, okay? So where's the tangent of beta equal to 1? Well, you might remember from your special triangles. Let me just erase, the, erase this and put this up here. So the tangent of beta equals 1. You might remember from your special triangles that one solution here would be 45 degrees, okay? Remember, tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3. Remember the all students, the all, all students take calculus. So it's positive in quadrants 1 and 3, okay? So I need to find the quadrant 3 solution. So I want the angle in quadrant 3 with a 45 degree reference angle. So I can go ahead and do 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, which is going to give me 225 degrees, okay? So let me put 225 degrees to finish that up, and then I can erase it. So let's put beta is equal to 45 degrees or 225 degrees. In terms of radians, you could write it like this. You could put pi over 4, and then you could do 5 pi over 4, okay? So that takes care of this part, all right? Now, over here, this is where we're going to struggle a little bit. So we have the tangent of beta plus 2. We're going to set that equal to 0. So let's go down here and get a lot of room. We'll come back up. So the tangent of beta plus 2 is equal to 0. Let me subtract 2 away from each side of the equation. I get the tangent of beta is equal to negative 2. Okay. So there's nothing you can pull from special triangles or the unit circle where you're going to figure this out. Okay. So what I would do here is go through and basically use your inverse tangent function on your calculator, okay? Go ahead and use this guy, okay? And I'm going to use positive 2, not negative 2. If you punch this up, you're going to get 63 point, and I'm going to round this, let's say 4, 3, okay? So this is in terms of degrees, okay? So now what this is telling me is that the reference angle with wherever I need to go is going to be 63.43 degrees, okay? Now tangent of beta here is negative. Where is tangent negative? It's negative in quadrants 2 and 4, okay? So I'm looking for a solution in quadrants 2 and in quadrants 4, okay? And what I want is the angle with a reference angle of 63.43 degrees. So in quadrant 2, I would do 180 degrees minus 63.43 degrees, which I'll say is 116.57. So let's go ahead and write this as 116.57 okay, degrees. And then in quadrant 4, I would do 360 degrees minus this 63.43 degrees. And that would give me 296. Let me write this down. So 296.57 degrees. So let's erase all of this. We don't need it anymore. And let's just bring this up here. And I'm going to combine all of this for one solution. So let me get this over here. And let me come up here. And I'm basically going to say, and let me kind of drag this over here. So I'm going to do one for degrees and one for radians. So beta could be 45 degrees, 225 degrees. You could have 116.57 degrees. And this is an approximation. So maybe you want to notate that this is approximately here. Okay. And then this is an approximation also. So 296.57 degrees. Okay. And then in terms of radians, if you wanted to convert this over, Again, for each of these, you would multiply by, you have degrees here, so you want degrees down here, and then you want pi up here, okay? So you would basically say that the degrees are going to cancel, so let me just show that real quick. 116.57 divided by 180, and then I'm just going to multiply it by pi, and I'm just going to round this off and say it's about 2.034, okay? So let me slide this down, and I'll just say it's about 2.034, okay? So let's get rid of this one, and let's do this one. So let's move this up, and basically we're going to multiply it by, again, you want pi over 180 degrees. We know that the degrees here are going to cancel, 
And basically I'm doing the same thing on my calculator, 296.57 divided by 180, then times pi. So let's just go ahead and say this is gonna be 5.176. So 5.176. And again, you just wanna show some way like, hey, this is an approximation. So I'll just put approximately like this, just showing that this is not an exact value. Now remember, if you're working with tangent, the period is 180 degrees or it's pi radians, okay? So this would be for, in the case of from zero to 360 in terms of degrees, and I made that terribly, okay? So 360 degrees. And then this would be basically from zero, let me put my degree symbol there, zero to two pi, okay? And then for the general solution, I'm gonna take 45 degrees, so let's go ahead and say 45 degrees, plus I'm gonna do 180 degrees times n, and then I have another guy here, so I'm gonna do 116.57 degrees plus 180 degrees times n. So again, this is an approximation. This is an approximation. It is not an exact value, okay? Depending on your teacher, you might have to show that in some way. So that's why I put this here and this here and this here and this here. That's just my way of notating. This isn't standard. This is my way of notating that, hey, this is an approximation. It's not an exact value, okay? So then down here, for this guy, I would start with pi over four and then plus the pi times n, okay? And then for this one, I would take my 2.034 and then plus my pi n, okay, like this. Now, again, if you wanna just notate that this is an approximation and this is an approximation, okay? Just to let your teacher fully know that you're aware that this is an approximation and not an exact value. In this lesson, we want to talk about solving trigonometric equations using square roots, squaring, and identities. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with 4 times sine squared beta minus 1 equals 0. So just like we've been doing before, we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. We're going to have 4 times sine squared beta is equal to 1, okay? So what I want to do now, remember, you're always trying to isolate your trigonometric expression. So I want sine of beta by itself. So what I'm going to do here is just divide both sides by 4, okay? And so that's going to give me the sine squared beta is equal to 1 fourth, okay? Let me scroll down just a little bit and get some room. So now, because this guy is squared, I want to take the square root of each side. Remember how this works. If I take the square root of the left, on the right, I want to go plus or minus, right, to account for the positive or the negative. So I'm going to say that the sine of beta is equal to plus or minus the square root of one-fourth, okay? If you simplify this, you'll say the sine of beta is equal to, you'll go plus or minus, the square root of one is one, and the square root of four is two, so you can basically say this is one-half, okay? So let me actually erase all of this, and let's come up to the top and just paste this back in here. So we know this gives us two scenarios, right? So I wanna split this up and say, the sine of beta is equal to one half, or the sine of beta is equal to the negative of one half. So let me erase this now, okay? So we have our two guys there. So basically what I'd wanna do is go to my unit circle. I know at this point a lot of you already have it memorized, but some don't. So let's go down and let's look for where the sine of beta is equal to a half and then also where the sine of beta is equal to negative one half. So basically you're looking for your y coordinate to be a half or negative one half. So that's going to happen here, okay? That's also gonna happen as we go around, it's gonna happen here. As we go around, it's gonna happen here. And then as we go around, it's also gonna happen here, okay? So notice everywhere where I circled has a 30 degree reference angle, right? So basically it's going to be, if you wanna put this in terms of radians or degrees, we'll just do both. So 30 degrees, then you have 150 degrees, you also have your 210 degrees, and then you have your 330 degrees. Okay, so that's in terms of degrees. And then in terms of radians, you would have your pi over six, okay? You would have your five pi over six. You would have your seven pi over six. And then lastly, you would have your 11 pi, okay, over six. So these would be your solutions if you said between zero and 360 degrees, or also if you said between zero and two pi in terms of radians. So let's just cut this away. I'm just gonna cut this, come back up here and paste this in, okay? So these are gonna be, again, our solutions. Let me just erase this nonsense here. These are gonna be our solutions for, basically, if you restricted this over an interval, again, you have from zero degrees to 360 degrees. That's this guy right here. 
And then this guy right here would be from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So sometimes they ask you this question to solve over a specific interval. And then other times they'll say, hey, what's the general solution? So if we want the general solution, let's just put this right here really quickly. And remember, when you work with sine, the period is going to be 360 degrees. But what you notice here is that as you jump here from 30 degrees to 210 degrees, you're increasing by 180 degrees, okay? So I would start this by saying I have 30 degrees plus 180 degrees times some integer n. And then you'd have 150 degrees, so 150 degrees plus this 180 degrees, okay, times n. Because again, if you look at 150 degrees and 330 degrees, those are different by 180 degrees, okay? And what's causing this, if we go back to the unit circle, if I circle this one again, you'll notice that these guys are across from each other. This is 180 degrees, right? So basically, these are across from each other and these are across from each other, okay? So you can basically say that you start with 30 degrees and you add 180 degrees to get your next solution. Then you add to 180 degrees again, it gets your next solution, so on and so forth. If you started with 150 degrees, you add 180 degrees to get your next solution, then 180 degrees again, so on and so forth, okay? If you wanted to put this again in terms of radians, we're gonna use the same concept. Here I'm gonna go pi over six, so basically your 30 degrees, then plus 180 degrees in terms of radians is gonna be pi, okay? So you're just gonna do pi times n, and then for 150 degrees, this is going to be five pi over six, so five pi over six, and then I'm just gonna go plus my pi times n. Okay, so here's all the solutions that you could possibly want. You have your degrees across that interval from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, and then you have your radians across that interval from 0 to 2 pi, and then you have your general solutions. So they're just basically if they didn't ask you to solve over an interval, this is how you'd want to list this for degrees and then for radians. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here's one where we're going to need to use some identities. So we have the negative of cosine squared beta minus 2 times sine of beta is equal to negative 2. So notice that you have sine here and then also cosine here, and cosine specifically is squared, okay? So what you're meant to think about, if we go back to our worksheet or our little handout on the identities, if you go to the Pythagorean identities, remember cosine squared theta is the same as one minus sine squared theta, okay? So you wanna look for possibilities there where you can substitute things in. So remember the negative here, this is a big deal. If you have a negative there, you're putting a negative, Put this in parentheses, what I'm going to do, because the negative's got to get distributed to everything. So I'm going to go 1 minus my sine squared beta, okay? Again, that's in parentheses. Then minus your 2 times your sine of beta is equal to negative 2, okay? Distribute the negative to everything. So I'll say negative 1 and then plus sine squared beta. Then minus 2 times sine of beta is equal to negative 2. Okay, so from here, we already know what to do. We want to end up with sine of beta equals some number, and then we want to solve, right? So I'm going to tell you in advance this is factorable. If you have something that is quadratic in form, if it's not factorable, you can use the quadratic form. Okay, but here we're going to be able to factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation, and I'm just going to rearrange things. I want the squared term all the way to the left. So I'm just going to say that I have sine squared beta, and then this is gone. I'm going to put 0 here. Okay, over here, I'm going to put minus 2 times the sine of beta, and then if I have negative 1 plus 2, that's positive 1. Okay, so this equals 0, and the idea here is that I can factor the left side. Okay, so I can factor this. Again, if it's a roadblock for you when you're trying to factor these guys, go ahead and take something like u, okay, and say sine of beta equals u, and then it's just like if you were trying to factor u squared minus 2u plus 1. Okay, if that was equal to 0, you could solve that in a breeze, right? It's just a roadblock because we're now dealing with trigonometry. So how could we factor this guy right here? And again, if it's if it's troubling you, just look at this one. Well, first off, if I had sine squared beta, and there's nothing out here, there's basically a 1, well, I'm going to have the sine of beta times the sine of beta. Okay, so that's my first term in each case. Now, for this part right here, again, you're just looking at the negative 2 and the positive 1. Okay, so I need two numbers that are going to multiply together to give me positive 1, but sum to negative 2. Well, that's going to be negative 1 and negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And basically, we could write this, okay, as the sine of beta minus 1 quantity squared. 
okay? So this equals zero. And the reason I write it like this is, you can write it like this or this. Remember, this is basically from special factoring. When you think about this, it's really only gonna be one of these guys that we have to set equal to zero, right? Because you have a duplicate solution. So basically all I wanna do here is just again take one of these and say sine of beta minus one is equal to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and add one to both sides and just say the sine of beta is equal to one, okay? Now this is going to be really easy to solve for us. Where does the sine of beta equal one? Well, if we're looking for the sine of beta equals one, well again, where's the y coordinate one? Well, right here, right? So at 90 degrees or pi over two in terms of radians. And that's basically the only place there. So your, your general solution would just be you rotating around another 360 degrees before you get there, okay? So let me go back up. So let's just put our solution here. So again, if we're in the interval, if they give you degrees, you want to answer in degrees. So if they say over the interval, you have zero degrees and then to 360 degrees. Again, if you get this, then your answer should be in degrees and you'd want to put 90 degrees here, okay? If you got an answer or if you got a test question where let's say it was with radians, so let's say they said zero to two pi like this, okay? Then now you wanna give your answer in radians. So you could say beta is equal to pi over two or if you do the solution set notation, just ask your teacher what they want. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this, so pi over two, okay? So that's my solution basically in these intervals. Now again, a general solution is where we keep thinking about when we just keep rotating around and around and around. So basically your general solution, if it's in terms of degrees, will it be 90 degrees plus another full rotation is 360 degrees times some integer n, okay? And then for the radians, you just use this pi over two, and then plus, again, one full rotation in terms of radians is two pi, so you would do two pi, and then times some integer n, okay? So this is your general solution here, sometimes they ask for that, and then these are your solutions if you have a specified interval, sometimes they ask for that. Okay, so let's look at a very, I would say challenging, but a very tedious type of problem now, this one involves squaring, and you'll recall from basic algebra, if you square both sides of an equation, you lose information, and so you have to basically check your solutions in the original equation, right? You sometimes get these extraneous solutions, and so they're not going to work as solutions to the original equation, okay? So we're going to see that here, and we're going to see that it just takes a long time to go through everything. So we have the negative of cosine theta is equal to the square root of 3 times the sine of theta, okay? Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is square both sides, okay? Because I wanna get rid of this radical, and also I have cosine and sine, so I'm thinking Pythagorean identity, okay? So I'm gonna square both sides. So let me write this as the negative of cosine of theta, okay? This is gonna be squared. This equals the square root of three times the sine of theta. This is gonna be squared, okay? So the negative is gonna go away. Negative squared is just gonna be a positive, right? Negative one times negative one is positive one. Then cosine of theta squared, we could just say this is cosine squared theta like this. Over here, the square root of three being squared is three. Sine of theta being squared is just sine squared theta, okay? So at this point, we know that cosine squared theta is one minus sine squared theta, okay? So let's just go ahead and make that substitution. I'll say this is one minus sine squared theta is equal to three times sine squared theta, okay? So let's scroll down and get some room going. All right, I'm just gonna subtract three times sine squared theta from both sides of the equation. And this is gonna cancel, and I'm just gonna put zero here. So I'm gonna have one minus, remember you can treat this as a negative one. So negative one minus three or negative one plus negative three, however you wanna think about this, this is gonna be minus four. Okay, so basically negative four times sine squared theta is equal to zero, okay? So how are we going to solve this? I want you to think back again to basic algebra, okay? This is where your skills really come into play. Let's say it's something like a squared minus b squared. How would you factor this? Remember, this is the difference of squares. So it's a plus b, okay, that quantity times a minus b, that quantity. Well, here you have the difference of squares, right? I could write this out and say that this is one squared minus, you could do two times the sine of theta, okay? Quantity squared like this, and this equals zero, okay? So now it's apparent or it's very clear that this is the difference of squares. Sometimes you have to rewrite things like that. So this would be one plus two times the sine of theta, times one minus two times the sine of theta, okay? And we'll set this equal to zero. So basically I'm gonna take each one of these guys and set it equal to zero. So I would have one plus two times the sine of theta is equal to zero, 
or you'd have one minus two times the sine of theta is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and solve. They're very easy to solve. I subtract away one from each side over here and over here and over here, and this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel, okay? So over here I have two times the sine of theta is equal to negative one. Over here I have, let me put the or, I have negative two times the sine of theta is equal to negative one, okay? So basically at this point, I'm just going to divide this by two, okay, and this by two, and then this by two, or this is negative two over here, and this by negative two. Okay, so this cancels, and I have sine of theta is equal to the negative one half, then or over here, this is gonna cancel, right? And you have negative divided by negative, so that's positive. So you get the sine of theta is equal to one half, right? So you can condense this down and say, basically you have plus or minus one half. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And let's just copy this real quick. Let's go to a fresh sheet. So we have a lot of room to work because the problem here is you're gonna get all these solutions, okay? So if the sine of theta is a half or it's negative a half, remember we already went through this. So let me write this again. So sine of theta is a half or sine of theta is negative a half. Basically you would have a 30 degree reference angle in each case, right? So you would have here and then basically you go around, you'd have here, and then you go around and you would have right here, and then you go around and you would have right here, okay? So we already know this because we saw a problem with this earlier, but basically 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 210 degrees, and 330 degrees, okay? So let me write this down. So we have our 30 degrees, we have our 150 degrees, we have our 210 degrees, and then we have our 330 degrees, okay? And I'll write it in radians when we finish up. So let me just keep this in degrees for now. Let me cut this away and let me just paste this in right here, okay? Let me get rid of all this nonsense. Now, when we square both sides of an equation, the solutions here that we get are proposed solutions. So we have to get our original equation going so we can check it. So negative cosine of theta, okay, is equal to the square root of three times the sine of theta. Okay, so we're gonna, just gonna use degrees. You can use radians, it doesn't matter. You're gonna plug in for theta, okay? So basically if I plugged in, 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here, what would we get? Well, again, I could go back and forth between the unit circle, but a lot of you already know that the sine of 30 degrees is a half, okay? So this is going to be one half. So this would give me the square root of three over two. So let's just write that as the square root of three over two. Okay, over here, I'd have the negative of cosine of 30 degrees. Well, the cosine of 30 degrees, you know is a positive number, right? Because 30 degrees is in quadrant one, all of these guys are gonna be positive in quadrant one, right? So there's no way this can be true because this is the negative of a positive number, okay? So you can go ahead and mark this out. The actual answer here is square root of three over two, right? But it's the negative of that. So it's the negative of the square root of three over two is equal to the square root of three over two, so that's false, right? So that solution does not work. Okay, for the next one, let me erase this and set this back up. So we had the cosine or the negative of the cosine of theta is equal to, we had the square root of three, times the sine of theta. So we know that the sine of, if I put in 150 degrees here, we know the sine of 150 degrees is basically a half, right? Because the sine of 30 degrees is a half, the sine of 150 degrees, because sine is positive in quadrant two, 150 degrees has a 30 degree reference angle. So this is a half as well, right? So this is basically gonna be the square root of three over two, okay? Over here, if you think about the cosine of 150 degrees, remember cosine is negative in quadrant two. Okay, so this will save you a little bit of work. You'd have the negative of a negative, which is positive. So you know this is probably gonna work, right? So the cosine of 150 degrees, we know that this guy is going to be the negative of the square root of three over two, okay? But you have the negative of the negative. So be really careful. So the negative of the negative of the square root of three over two. So if I apply the negative, I basically would have the square root of three over two is equal to the square root of three over two, okay? So this one checks out. So 150 degrees is a valid solution. Then for 210 degrees, let's go ahead and set this back up, and I probably shouldn't erase this each time, but it's the negative of the cosine of theta is equal to the square root of three times the sine of theta. So 210 degrees, if you put this in here, okay, and you put this in here, again, we know that the reference angle is 30 degrees, right? So what is the sine of 30 degrees? Well, it's going to be one half, but we're in quadrant three now, so we know this is negative. So basically this is negative one half. So this would be the square root of three times negative one half. So square root of three over two, and this is negative, okay? So over here, 210, again, this many degrees, I know that I have a reference angle of 30 degrees. So the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. And because this guy is in quadrant three, cosine is negative. 
So this is the negative of the square root of three over two. So this isn't going to work out, right? Because again, if I apply the negative, this becomes positive. So again, we have one that doesn't work. So this one doesn't work. And then for 330 degrees, let me just do this one last one. So the negative of cosine of, let's just go ahead and say 330 degrees is equal to, you have the square root of three times your sine of 330 degrees. Again, I've got a 30 degree reference angle and I'm in quadrant four. So I know this is negative one half, right? So might as well just put negative square root of three over two, okay, like this, and I'll just put this out here. Okay, so over here, again, I have a 30 degree reference angle, but cosine is positive, okay, in quadrant four. So I would say square root of three over two, so square root of three over two, but it's the negative of that because I've got this negative hanging out. So these guys are equal. So this one does work out, okay? So your two valid solutions here are 150 degrees or 330 degrees, okay? In terms of degrees, and then if you're working with radians, it's five pi over six or then 11 pi over six. So let's go ahead and write our solution here. We'll say from the interval, if you're in this interval zero degrees and then 360 degrees, we'll say the solution set is basically 150 degrees, okay? And then 330 degrees only, okay? So just those two guys. And then if I'm in this interval from zero to two pi, okay, if they give it to you like this, always answer based on what they give you as the interval, okay? If they don't give you anything, then you can just ask your teacher like, hey, what do you want this in? So basically at this point, I wanna do my radians. So I'll go ahead and say that this is five pi over six and then 11 pi over six. Let me close that down. And then again, if you want a general solution, you want to realize here that you can just add 180 degrees each time. Again, I know the period for sine is 360 degrees, but you have to pay attention to this type of stuff if you're writing a general solution. So the general solution here would be, let's go ahead and say 150 degrees plus 180 degrees times n. Okay, so you don't want to do 360 degrees there because, again, if I add 180 degrees, I get to 330 degrees. Then if I add 180 degrees to that, I'm going to be at 150 degrees plus 360 degrees, which is 510 degrees, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, and then in terms of radians, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's 5 pi over 6 plus 180 degrees is going to be pi radians and then times n. Okay, so these are your general solutions. And then these are your solutions if you're given a specific interval to solve over. Just get with your teacher in terms of what you need to do.